Hey guys, welcome back to Introduction to Rust. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be building our layout module for our browser engine. Our layout module will take our style tree and translate it into a bunch of rectangles in two dimensional space. The layout module's input is the style tree itself, and then the output is yet another tree, which will be our layout tree. Layout in HTML and CSS is all about boxes. A box is a rectangular section of a web page. It has a width, a height, and a position on the page. The rectangle is called the content area because because it's where the box's content is drawn. Content may be text, it could be an image, a video, or it could be other boxes. A box may also have padding, borders, margins to surround its content area, and the CSS spec has a diagram showing how all of these layers fit together. Now I'll link the spec in the description so you guys can take a look. Let's build the module, so naturally we'll create a file called layout.rs, and we'll link it up in our lib.rs by just typing in pubmod layout. So we want to import the standard FMT because we're going to be adding debugging. We're also going to make imports from our CSS for our unit enum, which if you recall has all of the unit types inside of it. And then we also want to make an import for the value enum, which also has the different values that can come from our CSS. Then we want to make an import from our style for display, which is our block inline, inline block or none enum. And then the styled node which is the main structure from our style tree. The main structure for our layout tree will be our layout box. You can kind of think of this like a node wrapper. We have a dimensions field, which is type dimensions, which is another structure that we'll create in here. We have our box type field, which will be of type box type, which will be an enum. Then we have our styled node, which refers to the styled node from the style tree. And then we have the children, which will be a vector of layout box. You can kind of see the pattern from our DOM node and our style node echoing in our layout box here in the last two fields where we have our main node and then we have a children node which is a vector of our structure. Then we want to make a struct called dimensions. This will have the content which will be a type of rectangle. Then we'll have our padding which will be a type of edge sizes. Our border which will also be edge sizes and our margin which will also be edge sizes. And then we'll have our current which will refer to the current layout box that we're looking at which will also be a type rectangle. For our structure for rectangle we're going to to have an X, which will be an F32, a Y, that's F32, and then a width and height, which are both F32. And for our edge sizes, we will have a left, right, top, and bottom, all of which are F32. So our edge sizes are our surrounding edges of our layout box, and the rectangle is the position of the content area relative to the original document. And then finally, for our block type, we'll make an enum, that will have block, inline, inline block, and anonymous. We want simple methods for our layout box, so we'll create a new method. This will just take in the box type and the style node, and it will output our layout box. And then we'll just instantiate our layout box and put box type into box type, style node into style node, and then we will create a default value for dimensions and then create a vector of new. Remember our dimensions field is actually just all of our rectangles and our margins and padding and all that stuff. We set it to default. This basically just sets all of those values to 0.0. .0. We want to create a method called layout. It will take in mutable self, which is our box layout. And then it will also take in our dimensions and then we'll match on the box type. Based on the box type, we'll call a different method. So for box type, block we'll call layout block for blocks type inline we'll call layout block and for box type inline block we'll call layout inline block and then we'll pass dimensions into each of those methods our layout inline block method will take in the mutable self and then our dimensions and this will call a bunch of methods on it and these methods each one of them will calculate their respective thing in pixels so for instance this calculate inline width will calculate the width in pixels then the inline position will calculate the position in pixels then we will call this on our children and then we will calculate the height in pixels as well. Here's what the inline width method looks like. Again, it takes in mutable self and dimensions. We create a variable called s, which is our self.style node. And then we create a variable called d, which is mutable self.dimensions. So then we set the width of our layout box with this function called get absolute number, which takes in our s, which is our styled node, our dimensions, and then the width string. And we unwrap it from an option. 
but if it comes back with none, then we just set it to its default, which will be 0.0. .0. For margin left, right, and for padding left and padding right, and border left and border right, we call this num or method. We put in the selector that corresponds with the element that we're looking at, and then we put in the default value. So this basically will try to read from the CSS the margin left or the margin right or the padding, etc., based on what it is. And if it gets a value, then it will set that value. Otherwise, it will set it to the default value. Next, we want to create our calculate inline position method. This will take in mutable self and dimensions. And like with up top, we get our styled node. And then we get our D, which is our dimensions as a mutable reference. And then we call on D the various different elements. So for instance, D.margin top, and we try to get each of the uh, values out of our CSS, or we set it equal to zero. And then we want to find our D.content.x and our D.content.y. And we do this by just adding a bunch of our elements together. And then we add up all of the vertical components to get our content Y. And then we set that into the layout boxes, dimensions.content.y. This method will position the current box below any previous boxes in a container by updating the height. And if we have any boxes that are like to the left or the right, it will also update the width. Next, we want to create a method called layout box. This takes in mutable self and our dimensions again. So this calls all of the functions to lay out the current box with our dimensions here being our parent box. So the bounding box that might be surrounding this box. Next, we want to create a calculate width method. And this method is to update the current layout boxes with dimensions. We pass in our mutable self, and then again, we pass in the parent bounding box. We get our styled node, and we set it to style, and then we get our D, which is our mutable dimensions. We run this get absolute number on style, B box, and width, and this will get the absolute number from the CSS by calculating it based on where the parent is and where the child is. Then we get our margin left, which is our styled up value, and it pulls out from style the margin left value and then our margin right does the same thing and we want to match on margin left and margin right and because these are references to references we need to double d ref m which is the ref inside of sum so we check to see if we get value other and if we do then we want to get the string from inside of it and then we want to parse it into a number and if we can't unwrap it or it can't be parsed into a number then we just set it to our default which is 0.0, .0. we do the same for our right margin number then we want to calculate our border.left, our border.right, our padding.left, and our padding.right. And these are all for our child box. These are all based on the parent box, and we're calculating them for our child box by pulling them out of our style tree. Then we want to take all of the numbers that we get and put them into a variable called total. And then we want to calculate the underflow, which is our parent box's content width minus the total. So if you think about it, if you have two boxes next to one another inside of a larger box, if you calculate the total, which is the width of the entire parent box, and then you just remove the width of one of these smaller boxes, then you'll be able to figure out where the child box will be, and that's what we're doing here. Then we want to do some pattern matching on width, margin left, and margin right. If we get back 0, 0, and then a bunch of stuff that we don't care about, this means that our width is auto. So we say, okay, well, if the underflow is greater than or equal to 0.0, .0 then we want to set d.contentWidth to our underflow, and we want to set our margin right to our margin r number. Otherwise, we want to set our margin right to our margin r number plus underflow and our content dot width to width. And then regardless of what happens, we want to set our margin left to margin left number. For this case, where we get back a width, a none, and then a sum with some value in it. And if width is not 0.0, .0 this means our margin left is auto. So we set our margin left to our underflow. We set our margin right to our margin r number. And we set our content width to w. For this pattern, which is essentially the same as this pattern, but these two values are swapped. This means that our margin right is auto. So we set our D margin right to underflow and our D margin left to margin left number. And then we set our content width to W. Now, if both right and left are auto, then we want to take our underflow divided by 2.0 and set it equal to both margin 
left and margin right and then we want to set the content width to our width and finally if our values are over constrained then we want to calculate our margin right by adding our margin right number to our underflow and then just leaving our margin left alone and setting the width to the width next we need a method to allow us to position the current box below the previous boxes in the container by updating the height so again we're passing in immutable self and we're passing in the border box or the parent box then we want to get our styled node and then the dimensions of the box that we're working on and we want to see if we have those values inside of our style tree then we will set those values to their respective numbers otherwise we'll reset them to default and then we want to calculate our content x and y so this calculate position method is sort of the inverse of the one that we did above called calculate inline position our next method will be called calculate height this will take in a mutable self reference and we'll use this method to find the style node's height value if it does exist we want to match on self.styleNode.value, and we want to put in height and then we're going to use this map or method to map this closure which is a match on h which is the each of the values inside of our style node that correspond with height and we need to double deref h and we want to check if value length comes back with an f32 then we will set our self.dimensions.content height equal to n which is the f32 inside of value length otherwise we just return nothing now we want a method called layout children this method will lay out our current child nodes and adjust them based on height this takes in our mutable layout box and we get our self.dimensions and we want to set a value of max child height equal to 0.0, .0. then we want to get the previous box type which we're going to set by default default to box type block then we want to iterate through our self dot children so the vector of layout boxes and we're going to match previous box type if we get back a box type inline box then we want to match on our child dot box type and for that if we get back box type block then we want to set current height and increment it by max child height and then we want to set our current x equal to 0, 0.0 otherwise we're just going to return nothing we're going to call child layout deref d on it we want to get our new height which will be child dimensions margin box which is a method that we haven't created yet with our height and we want to check to see if new height is greater than our max child height and if it is then we want to set our max child height to our new height we match on child.box type if we get back a block then we want to increment our content.height by our child.dimensions.margin box height if we get back an inline block then we want to increment our current.x by child.dimension.margin box width and again this method we haven't created yet for d.current x is greater than our d.content width then we want to set d.content height incremented by max child height we want to set our current x to 0.0, .0. call child dot layout which will relay out our child we can call d dot current dot x and increment it by our child dot dimensions dot margin box dot width after all this we want to call previous box type and we want to set it equal to child dot box type dot clone so this will clone our child and make it into our next previous box all right so those are all the methods that we need for our layout box now let's implement our debug for layout box this is fairly straightforward so we just implement debug for layout box and inside of our f and T, then we just want to print out type with a uh, backslash n and then self.box type with the debug flag and then self.dimensions with the debug flag next we want to create some methods for our dimension struct so our first method will update the content size to include the paddings and this is just called padding box which takes in a reference to our dimensions and outputs a rectangle and we'll just return self.content.expanded then for our next method called border box which takes in a reference to self and outputs a rectangle we want to update the content size to include our borders so we'll call our padding box method here and then we'll call this expanded method on it and then we'll input our self.border then our last method for dimensions will be this margin box method which will take in a reference to self and output a rectangle and it will update our content size to include our margins by calling our border box method and then calling expanded on that and then putting self.margin inside of it naturally we want to implement debug for our dimensions and this will just implement our write macro by saying content backslash n with the debug flag and putting self.content in then padding putting self.padding then border putting self.border and margin and putting self.margin now for our rectangle we want to create a method called expanded this expanded method allows us to expand a rectangle with a 
given set of dimension. So our E is our edge sizes that we want to expand by. And then of course we take in a reference to our rectangle. And then we instantiate a new rectangle by taking X and subtracting E dot left, by taking Y and subtracting E dot top, by taking our width and adding E dot left and E dot right, and by taking our height and adding E dot top and E dot bottom. We also want to implement debug for rectangle, which will just have X, which we'll call self.x, y, which we'll call self.y, w, which we'll call self.width, and h, which we'll call self.height. We also need debug for edge sizes. This is very similar to what we did for a rectangle, except instead of x and y, we have left and right, and then instead of width and height, we have top and bottom. Just put in self.left, self.right, self.bottom, and self.top. We want to create a debug for box type. This will be a simple match statement. We'll just match on our box type. If we get back block, then we'll return a string called block. If we get back inline, then we'll return inline. If we get back inline block, then we'll return inline block. And if we get back anonymous, then we'll return anonymous. And then we'll just put that into our write function. Now we want to create our get absolute number helper function. This takes in our style node, our border box, which is the parent box, and prop, which is a reference to string. And this prop, if you guys remember, was the selector that we were passing through. So then we just match on s node.value prop. So this looks for the prop, which is the selector on our style node and tries to get the value out. Then if we get back some value, we need to match on that value and we need to dereference this three times. Then we want to set value length equal to matching on u, where u is the unit. We're only going to support pixels and percent for now. If we get back unit pixels, then we just want to return sum L. If we get back unit percent, then we want to return sum L and multiply it by borderbox.content.width and then divide that by 100. And this will help us convert the percentage into pixels. Otherwise, we want to panic and just say that we haven't implemented that CSS length yet. Now we want to create a function called layout tree. This takes in the root style node and then the containing block, which is a dimension. This is like our entry point to our layout tree. The root is the root of the style tree and the containing block is the window or the viewport. So this layout algorithm expects the container height to start at zero. So we set it equal to zero. Then we call this build layout tree function on root and then set it equal to root box, which is mutable. And then we want to call layout on root box with our containing block and then return root box. Finally, we want to create a function called build layout tree. This will take in our styled node and this will recursively build our layout tree given our style tree. The node that we're given is the current style node that's being laid out and this is all being called inside of our layout tree. So this starts with our root node and then it will traverse up the style tree node by node by node. Then this gets each of those nodes and lays them out one at a time. Set layout node equal to layout box new and then we match on node.get display and if we get display block then we want to set our block type to block if we get display inline then we want to set block type to inline if we get display inline block then we want to set block type to inline block and if we get display none then we want to set block type to anonymous then we want to iterate through the children of our style node and we want to get the display like we did up here the difference is for each of the matches we do something different so we call layout.node.children and then we push build layout tree, which is this function on that child. So we call this function recursively based on each of the ones that we get. And finally, we return our layout box. Like with our style tree and our node module, we want to have a pretty print function. And you can think of the level like the area of the tree that we're currently on. We start with our root node, we print out the level and then the node itself. And then we iterate through our node.children.iter. We pull the child out and then we increment level plus one for each child. All right, so that's it for our layout tree. For our next module, we will be building our renderer and we will then be adding some OpenGL and making it so that we can actually render some HTML and CSS to a page. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. And if you dislike the video, then downvote it as much as you'd like. Have a good day, guys.